Hey guys, this is Sean Sandridge. Thank you so much for clicking onto my channel. So hit that like button, subscribe, and tell a friend about me. So just in case you didn't know, check out, check me out on other social media platforms. Check me out on Periscope, Twitter, and IG. Same name, keeping it simple. So it is Friday, TGIF Friday, for those who have their last work day today. And I am in my husband's car since he's out of town I'm enjoying driving his car and I'm trying to get this this glare off so you guys can see me without being completely annoyed so I am using my selfie stick using some selfie stick magic to prop myself up I just ran an errand into uh, City Hall and uh, I'm sitting in the parking lot I gotta go back to the office finish up some work and I am going to do a much needed uh, facial so um, I'm going to Ulta and I am going to uh, get myself a facial I think it's an hour long yeah I think it's an hour long so <clears throat> so I'm excited about that because I, I need I need to decompress so I hope you guys are having a wonderful day and I'm coming back because uh, Nisi, who subscribed to my channel, really liked the daily vlogs. And I want to say thank you. I do appreciate the feedback. I read the comments. And I want to say thank you. And so, um, yeah. So, here I am. So, I want to just jump in because uh, I want to title this just random talk. I'm not going to keep you long. And uh, we're going to title this Parenting Chronicles, The Teenage Years. And so for those of you who have been on my channel for a while, no, I have three teenagers. I have a senior, I have a junior, and I have a freshman in high school. And, uh, you know, the age-old question is always, how can you have children that are, li are living in one house who are being raised by, you know, the same set of parents and they all seem to come out differently. And the truth of the matter is, is that they may be in the same environment, they may have the same parents, but you're working with individuals. And as I found out hmm, later in my parenting journey, that you can't always parent your children the same way as you were parented, one, and you can't parent each child the same way because each one is different. They have their tr triggers, they have their push buttons, they have their, you know, their weaknesses where you have to figure out with each child what works. And some children, you're going to have to use swift justice because they're always pushing the envelope. Some children, you're going to have to, you know, um, talk to them. Uh, everybody has their own th thing. Now, in my family, growing up, I was the oldest. And then I have a, a brother who's 10 years younger. And then I have a sister who's the baby. And she's 14 years older, 14, 14 years younger than me. And I was the good kid. I didn't give my mom a lot of trouble. And then my brother was a hellion. He he was always an, a problem. Now, my sister, my mom, all she had to do was raise her voice to my sister. And that was it. She would just break down crying. So the punishment that we all got was completely different. So on to my story. My senior, my daughter, uh had an infraction and uh, it cost her access to the car and this was the second infraction that warranted her not to have the car the only uh, time she can use the car is to go to work and she's not quite get grasping the gravity of that because there's going to be winter break soon, Christmas break. And all throughout that time, she is not going to be able to drive the car unless she's going to work. And the other stipulation is I need to see the schedule. 
If I don't know what your work schedule is, you're not getting the car. So that has been her consequence. And, you know, when you're having teenagers, I mean, there's no rule book. But for me, um, because I was on my own so young, you know, I feel like as a parent, you know, my job at this point in your life is to really give you real world rules, real world consequences, you know, trying to guide you and understand that if you do uh, situation A or put yourself in situation A, you're going to get consequence B. You know, I really believe at this point, because I've done all the groundwork and the foundational work, I've taught you right from wrong, and I realize you're not going to do everything 100%. But understand that there are natural consequences to certain things, you know, just like, like gravity is a universal law, you know, what goes up must come down. Um, the same thing holds true in life. And my senior is actually going to be graduating and she's considering joining the army. So, you know, very soon she is going to be out into the world dealing with her own, uh, making her own choices and dealing with her own consequences without having the, the soft landing to fall of her mommy and daddy. So, you know, she gets upset with me because I don't have a lot of tolerance for her. But the truth of the matter is, is that she's going to be 18 very soon. Her birthday is uh, January, it, you know, January 3rd. And she's going to be 18 very, very soon. And there are a lot of things that you can do making choices where your mom and dad cannot save you, whether it's, um, you know, just in general, you know, they're, the training wheels are off. You got to figure this out and you have to make sound judgments because there's going to come a time very soon where one, I'm not going to be there to help you. And two, you have to feel confident that you know how to take care of yourself and you have to trust, you have to trust your training that your mom and dad gave you. And you have to trust that you can do this on your own with the minimal amount of of uh, consequences so she's been hearing this from me over and over again and she knows that she can't have the car so she's supposed to get on the bus at 6 30 in the morning so I worked very late because my husband's in Vegas and so I'm you know pulling double duty and I was working late and I decided you know what I have to be at the office at 9 but I'm just gonna have a, lo a lounging um, time and she realizes that she is on notice with one of her classes because she has been late she has been late even though she has driven the car she has the car and she can get herself to school on time but evidently she has not now I don't know you know when she leaves my house I don't know what she's doing as far as lounging with her friends and just strolling in but she was on notice so I just like said, you know, you know what is at stake and I'm not going to continue to yell at you and I'm not going to continue. Like if you can't understand what the consequences are at this point in time, then I can't help you, you know. So I, you know, I'm just letting things go. So uh, she's she's supposed to be on the bus at 630 and if she misses the bus, well, just in general, you have to be in class at 745. So she has been tardy, I think, five times now. So um, she was on notice. Fast forward to this morning. I come downstairs about 722. And I walk downstairs and I see she's in the bathroom brushing her teeth. Hmm. Okay, I literally just woke up and all I can think about is that I want my cup of coffee. So I walk down the stairs, I see her, I just keep walking, I make my coffee and I walk back upstairs. Meanwhile, she hasn't said anything to me. She hasn't said, mom, I'm running late. Can you take me to school? She hasn't said anything. We both made eye contact and I didn't say anything because at this point I'm like, I don't know what's going on. And at this point, I don't care. I just want my coffee. So... 728, I get a knock on the door. I'm laying there with my coffee, got my eyes closed, because really my eyes just don't even want to be open. And I'm like, what do you want? And she's like, I need you to take me to school. And I'm like, what? 
She goes, I need you to take me to school. So I open the door and I go, you're going to knock on my door at 728 and tell me that you need to go to school. I'm in my pajamas. I just woke up. I've barely been awake for 10 minutes. And she's like, yeah, and um, I need I need to I need to be there on time because I can't afford to be late. And I said, well, you obviously didn't plan to be on time because if you knew what time you had to be at school, you wouldn't be knocking at my door at 728. OK, um, we don't live very far from the school. However, um, she was up and of course if you know you're running late you should have you know i don't know uh said something sooner so i said well you're just gonna have to wait for me she's like well i can't afford to to be to be late and i said well i that it's not my problem so i will get ready so i went and got ready rich really only took me 10 minutes and um I drove now it's a seven minute seven eight minute drive maybe 10 minutes tops and by the time I rolled up to the school it was 747 oh she was pissed now this is the child that is always pushing the envelope and thinking that everybody should accommodate her and you know that saying people some, some people think that fat meat ain't greasy mm-hmm that's the one I have at home so that's my story time of my morning. Let me know uh, what you think of the story. Um, I was so quiet. I was quiet as a mouse. Oh, she had her arms folded and pouting. I didn't lecture her. I didn't, I didn't argue. I didn't go off because at this point, you know, you know what you're supposed to do. You know what you're supposed to do. As soon as you knew that you were going to be running late, you should have, you should have gotten me, you know? And now that saying, uh, don't let poor planning on your part be an emergency on my part i get you i i bet you one thing i bet you monday morning i bet you she's gonna get herself up or if not if she uh isn't uh if she misses the bus i bet you she'll wait she won't wait to the last minute so that's all i have oh teenagers they are something else i just I will be very happy when this is over and I can live through it and uh, feel better about them because <laughs> I'm at the point at this time where, you know, the majority of the time I'm really not liking them because it's just so easy to do the right thing. And I just, I just feel like you just waste so much time just trying to do things that just makes your parents so crazy. But you know, I wasn't even going to sweat it. She's lucky I only took like eight minutes. I could have taken longer. And that is also I had to warm up the car because it's like 32 degrees out. I'm not going to go jump in my car. So there you go. There's my story time. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, enjoy your weekend. Um, I'm wrestling mom. I got to cook for the kids because we're having a home game. So I'm going to be making some spaghetti and a crock pot and all that stuff. So I'll be busy doing that. So and enjoying my facial and I might review how my facial went. I might. So take care of yourself and each other and I will talk to you pretty soon. Bye.